Now let's stand to our feet and let's give Jesus the biggest shout of praise. He deserves all the glory. He deserves all the honor. Come on, give Jesus a shout of praise. It is so good to be back in San Bernardino. I miss you guys like crazy. I just want to hug all of you guys right now. Esther, I love you guys so much. Wow, we got a packed out house in the house. Give yourselves a round of applause tonight. Man. Gavin, you're right. The fire of God is all over this place right now. Give it up for Gavin, all of our pastors, Christian, Pastor Marco, and all of our leaders. Michael, Father, no. give it up for all of our leaders. We got great leaders and pastors. Everybody wave to Pastor Marco. I don't know if he's watching and I'll just wave to him. I am more than excited to be here. Couldn't wait to get here. It's about a 10-hour drive. If you stop to eat, stop to go to the restroom, about 10 hours or so to get here. I came in late last night. But I'm so excited to see what God is doing. I'm looking at the services online. I see Gabriel tearing it up in Compton, California. Wait. Where is Gabriel at? Is he in Compton tonight? Is that where he's at? Might be in Compton. Oh, yeah. All right. Is he playing hooky tonight? Where's Pastor Gabriel? Is he playing hooky tonight? Hopefully he's watching. Everybody wave to Gabriel. Who knows where he's at? Yeah, just wave to him. I don't know, I don't know where he's at. <laughs> Tijuana, Mexico, churches tearing it up, getting reports from Tijuana, Mexico. The fire of God and the Holy Ghost is there moving. Give it up for Pomona, Pastor Chris. Where's Pastor Chris at? Tearing it up over there, Pastor Chris. So proud of you guys, man. Pastor Joe Arrowhead. Where's Pastor Joe at? Where is he at? Is he with Gabriel, too? Where'd those guys hang out tonight? <laughs> All these churches are now our newest church in Safford, Arizona. God is moving. The last, the last week or so now, one of my assignments here at The Way is to help pioneer churches. The last week or so, um, Stockton and Oakland has been on my head. So look at your neighbor and tell them, don't get too comfortable. You might have to go to Oakland or Stock Stockton. I play a lot of sports. I'm a scout. Oh, right here, you're pointing. We got a candidate right here. All right, we'll send Ruben out. We'll send Ruben to Stockton, Oakland. Because what God is doing, we're not even, we're barely at the tip of the iceberg right now. I'm in Arizona, but I'm thinking about these other cities. I'm already looking at Tucson, looking at Phoenix. Tucson is, in, Tucson is infested with drugs, taking over shootings all the time in Tucson, Arizona. I'm looking at East. We still got to get to Chicago. We still got to get to Detroit. We still got these cities. We're on the move. And then I need some help in Arizona. If you want to come help me? Come help me in Arizona. But I'm so excited to be here. You can remain standing. We're talking about the Holy Ghost. You know, we just got some new T-shirts from Sanford, Arizona. You guys want a couple of these? Let me get out. If this, if this is not, if this is not. If that's not your size, it is. Go way in the back, Chris. Get somebody in the back one over there. Get someone in the back. Go throw it. You got a good arm, Chris. Give it to somebody over there. You can remain standing. Turn with me to the book of Acts chapter 11. You can remain standing. I want to get into the word. The Holy Ghost has a word for us tonight. If you know me long enough, I just like to take care of business, TCB. It's time to take care of business tonight. 
If you're in this room tonight, you don't know Jesus, in about 30 minutes, you're about to get saved in Jesus' name. You're about to get saved. Your whole life's going to turn around. Everything's going to begin to shift. You're about to get saved tonight. We declare it in Jesus' name. The Bible says wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. Acts chapter 11. And as I began to speak, I'm speaking out of the King James Version. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. As on us at the beginning, get ready. As I'm speaking for the next maybe 30 minutes or so, the Holy Ghost is going to fall upon you like never before. I see the, this last Saturday, Gavin, you guys did a six-hour God encounter. I've only seen three hours of it. i got to get the other three hours still. As we're ministering, as we're worshiping, the Holy Ghost is falling upon us. Go down to Matthew 3, 11. I don't have you sit down. Matthew 3, 11. Those that are watching online, thank you so much for watching. And those in Saffron and different areas around the United States, thank you so much for watching us here tonight. Matthew 3, 11. This is one of our main scriptures here tonight. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. This is John the Baptist speaking. But he that cometh after me, talking about Jesus, is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. I can't hold Jesus' sandals, John the Baptist says. He shall baptize you. With the Holy Ghost and with fire. There's going to be two baptisms tonight that's going to take place. One of them is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. For the ones that haven't spoken in tongues yet, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, tonight you're going to get your tongue, some of you guys, tonight. So you're going to get a baptism of the Holy Ghost. But it doesn't stop there. The Bible says he will baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Look at your neighbor and tell him, get ready for the fire of the Holy Ghost. Tell the person behind you, get ready for the fire of the Holy Ghost. How many feel the fire of the Holy Ghost already here tonight? I just heard the Holy Spirit say right now, is there somebody, a few people right now, dealing with a migraine headache? Can you raise your hand right now? He's going to set you free, man. He's going to set you free right there. You got a migraine. He's going to set you free. The Holy Ghost is here. He's going to say, way in the back, he's about to set you right here. You got a migraine headache. You got a migraine right over here? Migraine, migraine. Right now, we come against this migraine headache in the name of Jesus we bind every spirit right now of sickness in the name of Jesus. We bind it and we rebuke it because the Holy Ghost is here. The fire of the Holy Ghost is here. Everything must be consumed. Sickness, go right now. Sickness, go right now in the name of Jesus. Headache, we command you to go right now in the name of Jesus. There you go. Headache's leaving her right there. Headache's leaving this, this man right here in the gray sweater. Right there. Headache's leaving her. The Holy Ghost is... Lay your, lay your hands, sweetie, right here next to her. Lay your hands on her tummy. The Holy Ghost is right over her. We, right now, the baptism of the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus. We're getting two baptisms tonight. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire right now. How many right now, we just prayed, you had a headache, and it just instantly just went right now? Raise your hand. It just left your body. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve people right now just got delivered right now from a migraine headache. Give Jesus a shout of praise. <laughs> Father, speak to us tonight. Speak to us tonight the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
and the baptism of fire. Tonight, Holy Ghost, consume this place. Healing already is taking place. Deliverance is taking place. Demons have to flee in the presence of the Holy Ghost. Some of you guys have been bound. You can't sleep at night. Raise your hand if you can't sleep. The enemy is attacking you. Right tonight, you're going to get the best night's sleep you've ever had in Jesus' name. We bind every tormented spirit. We bind every tormented spirit in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. Touch us here tonight, Lord. Yes. I just love being in the presence of the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. We're not rushing. Yes, thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Lord. So there you go. Father, we thank you tonight, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. and Give your neighbor a high five as you're going down. Say, man, it's so good to see you tonight. If you're a note taker, the title is The Baptism of Fire. There's two baptisms described in Matthew 3.11. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire. Jesus tonight is going to perform two baptisms. The baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire fire. The definition of baptism, you know it, let me just remind you. The definition of baptism, total immersion, to be submerged, to be in, and to be covered by. Tonight, there's going to be immersion of the Holy Ghost upon your life. No more after tonight will you stay on the surface. After tonight and in this month, you're going deep. You're getting submerged with the Holy Ghost. We're in, we're in times now. This world has shifted in the last couple of years. We need to see that some of the great falling away already before our eyes. Pastors falling. Pastors getting drunk after they preach. Worldly secular music playing in, in foyers of church. Some of these churches, the Lord is going to shut them down. Because they're misrepresented the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is holy. Some will say holy. Baptism is an immersion. Give you a little example, really simple, simple example. See, Gavin, you, he uses a lot of props. I like your props, man. I just want to copy you here tonight. I seen the camera thing you had here last week, and this is the majority. If you can zoom in on the camera, I don't know if you can. Or is it in the right area? There you go, Marcus. What's up, man? Love you, my boy. Love Marcus. He stuck up on me, man. This is most churchgoers. They're not immersed. They just stay on the surface. You can't give most churchgoers any meat. They'll choke. They can't take it. See, but this church this month is going to a whole nother level. You're going to be able to handle, you right now, you're handling some steaks. How hard do you can handle steaks? You just did a six-hour God encounter. How many went to that God encounter? Raise your hand. You're being immersed. The ones that didn't go, you missed out. You better get to the next one. Some of us, we're still on the surface. We haven't been immersed by the Holy Ghost. How do we know that? Christians still compromising.
The days of compromise are over. Leaving church and getting high, those days are over. And I got a news flash. You leave church and get it high, you're not saved. Saved people don't do that. Saved people live holy. Saved people reverence the word of God. Say, how many saved people do I got in the house? Give the Lord a big shout of praise. We didn't do holy wars in this church for years. And just this last year, the Holy Ghost said, bring back holy warriors. How many has been through holy warriors? How many have not been through holy warriors? Sign up right now. Get on your phone. Sign up for holy warriors. And I heard that marriage, I forgot. You guys want to give me an announcement? I totally forgot. Marriage, there's nine slots left for marriage couples. Marriage conference, nine couples left. Sign up tonight. Go on your phone. Sign up. I did it, Christian. We got it done. Some of us are still on the surface. The Holy Ghost still doesn't control your life. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is this. It's a complete takeover of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost now calls the shots. The Holy Ghost dictates who I marry. Which my beautiful wife, Veronica, is in the house. It's a Holy Ghost takeover. Holy Ghost tells you what church to go to. The Holy Ghost tells you where to move. The Holy Ghost tells you where to go. The Holy Ghost tells you what to say. The Holy Ghost tells you what to think. When you're baptized of the Holy Ghost, it's a complete takeover immersion. It was only four months ago I was at, at the mall in, in, in California, four or five months ago, doing my shopping. I knew Arizona was on the map. We were kind of undecisive who we were going to sit out there and Pastor Marco calls me out of nowhere, and I'm at the mall, Cario Mills. I said, I said, what's up, Mark? He said, you're the one that's going to Arizona. I said, well, glory be to God, because I'm, I'm immersed with the Holy Ghost. Whatever he says, we go. So some of you guys might be going to Oakland or Stockton. See, but. Church goers that are on the surface, they're not really making an impact in anyone's life. You go to work and people don't even know you're a Christian yet, still. After three years being on go. That's not you guys. That's the church down the street. That ain't you guys. This is how immersion looks like. It's a total, total submission, surrounded, engulfed with Total, total immersion. We're living in days right now. If you're a surface Christian, you're not going to make it. Surface church, you're not going to make it. We might not even see you here five months from now. Because surface churchgoers, the, the devil has access to their lives. Has too much access. But Christians and disciples that are immersed, there's a protection, there's a guidance, there is power, there is fire when you're immersed by the Holy Ghost. Look at your neighbor and tell them you got to go all in. Tell your neighbor, get off the surface. <laughs> now, What's the first step in getting baptized of the Holy Ghost? And in a few minutes, we're going to tackle what the bapti or the baptism of fire is in a second. But what's the first step of receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire? Here's the answer. Repentance. Turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 2, 38, 39. Read out the Amplified. What's the first step to being baptized in the Holy Ghost? 
got to repent. And Peter said to them, repent. Change your old way of thinking. Turn from your sinful ways. Accept and follow Jesus as the Messiah and be baptized. Each of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, because of the forgiveness of your sins, you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, for the promise of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Ghost is for you and your children. For all who are far away, including the Gentiles, as many as the Lord God calls to himself. The first step on getting engulfed, getting immersed of the power of the Holy Ghost is repentance. A new way of thinking, changing the way you act, changing what you look at. We can't go to any more worldly concerts. I know it got quiet. We can't go to any more worldly concerts. You can't afford it anymore. As soon as you step foot in the enemy's territory and you step foot in a worldly concert, you are surrounded by demons. Then we're wondering why our kids are all messed up sometimes. It's because us as parents, we're opening the doors to demons. Holy Ghost, he wants to immerse us. We need a time of repentance. There's nothing that makes me more excited than when I see my daughter Mariah up here singing for Jesus. I love everything that's happened in the church. I love what's happened in Arizona. When I look at my daughter, I just want to cry up there. Because she's following in daddy's footsteps. She's being immersed with the Holy Ghost. But it takes parents who's immersed with the Holy Ghost to pass it on to their kids and grandchildren. Tonight, I want every parent to lay hands on your kid to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Kids' world will do it, but don't leave it up just to kids' world. You train them at home. How many parents we got in the house? Baptize your kids tonight. Lay hands on them tonight. How many have kids right now a little older and they're not serving God? Stand up really quick. We're going to break generational curses. Stand up. You got an older kid right now. They ain't serving God. You got four of them. How old are they? So they're all young adults up to 33. You got four of them not serving God. I can know what's your last name? Huh? Lugo. Generational curses are being broken off you and your family and your children. Your kids will serve Jesus. They will be full of the Holy Ghost and fire. They will love Jesus. We bind the devil. We bind those demons in Jesus' name. If you're standing next to someone or you're sitting next to someone, stand, just put a hand on them really quick. Put a hand on them. Generational curses are being broken in the name of Jesus. You have kids right now not serving God? How old are they? 14. 14 years old? Is he here right now? Is she here right now? Where is she at? She's with her mom. Your 14-year-old will be saved, full of the Holy Ghost. Every generational curse is broken. Spirit of depression is being broken off your daughter. I just heard the spirit, Lord. Spirit of depression, go in the name of Jesus. Spirit of doubt off your daughter is being broken right now in Jesus' name. Ma'am, right there in the white, you got flowers right here. You got kids right now not serving God? How old are they? It's getting broken right now. Parents who have kids not serving God, slip your hand up. Receive it right now. Say, I receive the salvation for my children. I receive the baptism 
of the Holy Ghost on my kids. My kids will serve Jesus. My kids will be full of the fire of the Holy Ghost. Devil let loose of my kids. As far as me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Give the Lord a big shout of praise. Holy Ghost is breaking curses. Time is running out. Time is short. So we could talk for hours about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This next one, we don't talk about it as much. Go back to Matthew 3.11. Let's read that scripture again. I indeed baptize you with water. Unto repentance. This is John the Baptist speaking again. But he that cometh, Jesus, after me is mightier than I. I whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Probably 95% of us, maybe, in this Gavin taught it. I didn't see the other three hours. I don't know. We don't have a clue what the baptism of fire is and represents. We think it's just fire, and, and I just jumped and screamed. That could be a little bit of fire. But that's not what the scripture is talking about. To get the full context of the scripture, look at verse 7, Matthew 3. So I'm going to answer a question for the next few minutes. What is the baptism of fire? Look at verse 7, Matthew 3. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming up or coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee God's coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Prove the way you live, that you have repented of your sins and you've turned to God. Don't just say to each other, we're saved. We're descendants of Abraham. That means nothing. For I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from a very stone. Look at verse 10. Here's the baptism of fire. Even when the axe, or even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped, thrown, and or chopped down and thrown in the fire. Now you go down to verse 11, that he's going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and baptize us with fire. What is the baptism of fire? Write this down. You got to get this. Holy Spirit, get ready to come down like fire. Holy Spirit, you told me if we read these scriptures and did this, God, that you would consume us tonight. You would consume this church tonight. This is what it is. No, write this down. It is when the fire of God comes in you and burns away all of your evil roots and desires. This is the baptism of fire. That at the root, God will burn up the roots. The roots of perversion is getting burned up tonight. You're wondering why you're dealing with pornography and you're dealing with lust. You have a root of perversion. There's a root of perversion. That's why you're still going after pornography and lusting and sleeping around. There's a root of perversion. How did it enter? Could have got molested. Somebody molested you. That spirit of perversion entered. The baptism of fire, when the baptism of the fire comes, it consumes every evil out of you, pulls it by the root, and burns every root. And now, 
How do we want to pull stuff out of the roots? In, in Arizona, you know, during during the summer, I didn't know this. We get monsoon rains over there. It's just the craziest rain. If you've never experienced it, it's wild. 16 mile an hour winds is nuts. But what happens with all that rain? A bunch of weeds come up. And I just got a house now with two acres. I got one acre to gather my roots. I mean, my, my weeds are up to here. I, I need a tractor to tear it down. It's beyond. I can't get to the roots. I need a tractor now to pull it out. It's too big. It's too massive. Some of us, you've tried everything to quit smoking, quit drinking, quit pornography, and quit this. And, and you haven't been baptized with fire quite yet. Once you're baptized with fire of the Holy Ghost, he goes down to that root. He pulls it out. The fire comes and burns it. If anybody trying to quit smoking, you trying to quit? Trying to, you got cigarettes on you? Give, give them to me. Grab, grab all these cigarettes. Grab all these cigarettes. Oh, we got, bring them. Oh, they're in your car? You know the reason why I'm saying that? Sweetie, what's your name? You're about to get set free, Melissa. Anybody got cigarettes on them? Oh, everybody's like perfect and holy in here. We had about 12 people. It's all in the car. How many want to quit smoking? Stand to your feet right now. I won't have you bring your cigarettes up. Yeah, don't be ashamed. This is your night of freedom. This is your night of breakthrough. The baptism of the fire of the Holy Ghost is here. Where's your cigarettes, ma'am, in the car? Are they in the car? They're at home? For the ones that have it at your car, you're not going to go home with. I want you to bring them after service to me. Now, let's just open it up for a lot of people now. Because the baptism of fire is here. Baptism of fire, what does it do? It burns up all the roots. It burns up all the evil desires. Continue standing. Yeah, you're going to get set free. If you're dealing with any type of addiction, drinking, smoking, pot, pornography, gambling, I don't care what, you're addicted to Netflix. You just watch show after show after movie after movie. You got to be set free from Netflix. I see husbands going like this and wives going like that. You guys got to do a whole series on Netflix and, and movies. If you're addicted to anything at all, baptism fires, brother, come on. I want you to stand up. You're addicted to anything. Anything. Stand to your feet. You're about to receive the baptism of fire. The baptism of fire cleans. The baptism of fire purifies. The baptism of fire cleans out. It burns. Everybody that stood, raise your hands to the Lord right now. I want you to repeat after me. I receive. The baptism of fire. Holy Ghost, I allow and I want the fire of God to consume every area that's unpleasing to you, that I'm addicted to. I receive the baptism of fire of the Holy Ghost. I receive my freedom. For wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and freedom. I receive the baptism of fire, fire, fire. Addictions broken right now. Give Jesus a big shout of praise. No, you can do better than that. 
Give Jesus a shout of praise. Fire fall, fire fall. We love the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We love operating in his gifts. I love operating in his gift. We love it. But we don't like the purging. We don't like the cutting off. We don't like the let go of. But that's where the Holy Ghost comes in. And that's where the baptism of fire comes in. It consumes. Now, we make a big mistake sometimes. Maybe they're recovering. Any of our pastors here, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now we're talking about the baptism of fire. This is a daily prayer now. I was in the room today. I said, we'll we baptize him with fire. Any unclean, take it out of me. Search me, God. If there's a bad thought, if there's a bad motive, if there's bad intentions, I want the baptism of fire to burn it. I want the baptism of fire to pull it up by the roots. If there's any unforgiveness towards somebody, Holy Ghost, baptism of fire, take it from me. It's an everyday thing. Just getting on these crazy freeways now in California, you need a baptism of fire after you're done. I almost forgot about the traffic. Seven miles. It took me, thir- what is it? 32 minutes and seven miles. I was upset. I got mad. I got in the flesh for about 15 minutes. I said, this is ridiculous. Get me back to Stafford. Get me back to Pima. This is nuts. This is insane. Then I look at your gas prices. I seen 630 on Waterman. And I said, how, how do people live in California? Do you know where our gas is at in Pima? 397. Some of you guys said, Pastor, I'll join you in Arizona. Sign me up. 397 gas. Sign me up. Now I hear the Holy Ghost speaking. That was just a little message trying to grab people in Arizona's heart. <laughs> See, I, I'm getting desperate in Arizona. You want to know how desperate I mean? I couldn't find a keyboard player, right? And I was going to call you guys, but I said, no, I got I to gotta get on my own. Can't just call Hallmark for everything. So I said, Lord, where can I get a keyboard player? So I'm driving down our main highway, Highway 70. You guys know Highway 70? Highway, all the kids know Highway 70. Highway 70, Highway, what is that? Whatever it is, Highway 70. All you guys do, Highway 70, Highway 191. And I was passing by a college, and the Holy Ghost said, you want a keyboard player? I said, yeah, Holy Ghost. He said, he probably got 200 in his college right now. Because every college has a music department. Don't you know that, Robert? You went to college. How do you know the Holy Ghost tells you you feel dumb sometimes? So the Holy, so I said, what do I do? Holy Ghost, call the school. He goes, no, go in the school. Your keyboard player is sitting right there. Go inside and in the school. So I went in the school. Nobody was there Friday. School's closed. I'm putting flyers everywhere. In, uh, big old flyers like this. In need of musicians, call Robert. Singers, call Robert, right? I'm all defeated. No one's there. And the Holy Ghost, you led me on the wrong day. But how many know when the Holy Ghost leads you, you better listen. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. I'm waking my, I'm making my way back to my car. I'm defeated. I'm just, uh, this is a, a waste of time, right? A hundred band members come out of their cars. I said, where y'all coming from? They said, we just came back from a parade. Who are you? I saw Pastor Robert, the new pastor at Victory Theater. Oh, we heard about that. He said, what do you want? I said, I'm looking for singers, guitar players, violinists. I want the baddest orchestra, baddest team in the whole Arizona. I want the baddest team we, we could get. 
And one guy said, real shocked, I play, I play the keyboard. I said, you do? I don't even know if the guy is sage yet. I said, can you play the keyboard? He said, I'll try. I, I, play, I play actually pretty good. So I sent a live, and the guy coming from the college plays the keyboard. Never played on a worship team. He gets there for practice. And he said, I can just read notes. If you get a note, you can play anything. And he just starts crying. His first service, he comes. I take communion. Usually I bring communion. I'm excited. This dude starts singing a song from heaven. It was like an opera type thing. It was the best communion I've ever taken in my life. Listen to the Holy Ghost. He won't let you down. Baptism of fire. Get back to the baptism. We're almost done. Jesus right now. He has to purify the church. It's still dirty. Hebrews 12, 29. For our God is a consuming fire. Fire represents supernatural cleansing. Represents purification. The Lord... Jesus, before he comes back, he can't come for a church full of spots and blemishes. Jesus will only come back when the church is holy. He will only come back to a church who's spotless and blameless. A church that follows scripture. A church that follows the word. He's coming back for a church that's holy. And in this baptism of fire, he's purifying. He's cleaning. And the, one of the sole purposes of cleaning house, of purifying you, so that you and I could get the anointing of the Holy Ghost. People who are living holy, they get some extra anointing. They can walk into a room and change an atmosphere. Person that's walking holy walks in authority. But we need the baptism of fire to cleanse us. You talk about power. I was going down Highway 70 again. Under the anointing. And I pass by our only dispensary place in town, only one that I know of. Probably got a bunch of legal ones, who knows. I pass by the dispensary under the anointing. When you receive the baptism of fire, there's a special anointing over you. I don't ask anybody to do this. I was under the Holy Ghost. Please don't do this. It's for me. I go past this dispensary. And it had to be 50, 60 cars. It was packed. The most packed I've ever seen. And I'm driving. And the Holy Ghost says, go inside and go preach. I've anointed you for such a time as this. I said, God, this is a small town. I can't go in a dispensary. He said, yes, I'm covering you. You're going to be okay. Get in that dispensary now and preach the gospel. I'm not telling you guys to do this. You got to be under the anointing. So I'm in my car contemplating. It's a small town. A little over 9,000 people in Safford. They're going to see the new pastor going into the dispensary. Pastor Marco's going to fire me. I got to go back to California. This is not going to end good if the Holy Ghost is not anointing me. And the Holy Ghost said, no, I've anointed you for this. Go inside. So I walk in under the anointing. Because when you're under the anointing, wherever you set your feet, you take back the land and property. But that's only if you've been through the baptism of fire. The anointing doesn't fall on compromisers. The anointing falls on the holy ones of Jesus. The sanctified believers. 
might get fired by Pastor Marco, but I'm walking in under the anointing. There were seven people in there. They're getting ready to get their pot in the back room. I said, hey, I'm a new pastor here in Stafford. I had nothing better than that, nothing better. Now, I'm going to get fired anyways probably. But. And the guy looks at me and goes, who are you? He's off to the corner, a little attitude. I said, I'm the pastor, the new pastor at the Victory Theater. He's not heard about that. He's not a lot, no religion, just like that. He came off aggressive. I said, you think I'm religious? A pastor in a pot shop. I said, when's the last time you had a pastor? He goes, we never had a pastor. I said, religious? And I sat down next to him. I said, I know why you're saying that. You've been hurt by church. You've been hurt by leadership. And I'm just looking for, he's waiting for his pot. God is my witness. I'm there for about 10, 15 minutes witnessing the people under the anointing. Lady comes out. She said, we're closed for the day. Our computer's shut down. Everybody go home. I looked at him. You're not getting your pot today. Jesus has come to your house today. The Holy Ghost has come to your house today. Get outside. You can't even buy pot. It gets better than that. They reopened for a week or two after that. The computer shut down. But before I left, I said, God, if you have to, shut this place down if you have to. Shut this place down. It's ruining lives. And now look at the notice on the door. You guys got that picture? Take a look at the notice now on the pot. It's closed until further notice. They've been closed for over five weeks. No more pot being sold in this building because of the fire of baptism. It roots out. Now the place is shut down. I don't know if they're going to open down the road. I don't know. Right now, no pot being sold in Stafford in that building. Because the fire of baptism came down. You could call the fire of baptism over neighborhoods. He's giving you authority. You could call the fire of baptism in a school. I double dog, triple dog dare you. March around this local high school and call down the baptism of fire on Cajon High School. Call the baptism of fire over San Bernardino High School. Call the bap because when the baptism of fire comes, it has to be pulled out by the root. But it starts off with you and I. We have to allow God to pull stuff out. Not only do you get the anointing to preach the gospel after you receive the baptism of fire, you get the anointing to heal the broken. After you've received the baptism of fire, after you've received the purging and the burning, now you get the anointing to heal the broken ones. You get the anointing to set the captive free. Now you get the anointing to cast out demons. Only they receive the baptism of fire. The anointing to recover the sight to the blind. The anointing to set the oppressed free. So, Pastor, where are you getting all this? Luke 4.18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This happens under the anointing. To proclaim liberty to the captives and recover of sight to the blind. To set at liberties who are depressed. When you go through the baptism of fire, you receive an anointing. And because of time, 
How many want one more thing? This is what happens too. When you receive the baptism of fire, not only do you have the anointing, here's another word. You have the authority. You have the authority. You have the authority now to activate these things. Cast and be free, cast out demons. The authority is on you. I felt when I was in that pot shop, I felt the anointing and authority take over the room. I felt, how many of you ever feel the anointing and authority take over atmosphere, take over a room, take over a conversation? The devil wants you to take over conversations. The, the enemy wants you to take over conversations. The, 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 God wants you to take over your job. God wants you to take over the neighborhoods. God wants you to take over your family. But first you need the baptism of fire. I wish you could like jump in my body and just and just live it out for a week. I just love Jesus. I love people. The reason why we're saturating teens because we love we want to see them cast and be free. The reason why we're doing a six hour God encounter, we want you to experience the Holy Ghost. But not only in a room setting out on the streets, out on the top of the block, out on the missions field, give it up for our missionary team, Kenya, and they're going to Uganda, out on the fields, the anointing, the authority. I drove up today, you talk about authority and anointing, I drove up and I seen construction across the street. I said, Christian, what is that? He said, Pastor, they're building a parking lot. I said, a parking lot for who? Are they putting a bunch of trucks? He said, I don't know. I said, I think what they're building it for. They're building that parking for kingdom. They're building that parking so we can park cars over there. We proclaimed that property years back. That property belongs to the way. That building over here belongs to the way. Tenth and area belongs to Because when you're under the anointing, when you receive the baptism of fire, you walk in authority. So you take over properties, close down pot shops. Everybody stand up if you can. I could be here all night. How many having fun tonight? You're going to be a surface churchgoer? Just on the surface? Gonna get immersed. The first step is repentance. We're gonna give an opportunity in this room. There's gonna be healing still going along in our altar call. Demons are gonna be set free during the altar call. A lot of action in a few minutes. People are gonna get set free and receive the baptism of fire. Uproot stuff. But before we leave this service. Before we see miracles and people get healed, we're going to see miracles, people get healed and delivered. Let's make sure you're saved. Let's make sure you're on your way to heaven. Just in Safford, our small town, we had a tragedy last week. 17-year-old girl and her sister, 15-year-old, driving on Highway 91. Pulled out in front of a trash truck. 17-year-old girl dead. 15-year-old was in critical condition, and now she's out of the hospital by the grace of God. Everywhere we go, we're soul winning. So I'm hunting mama's phone down. Give me mama's phone. Account's not that big. Someone's got to know her. Found out one of our members... That was their nieces that died. I go, give me mama's number. Called her up. She was at the hospital, very distraught. Couldn't speak much. Prayed over her. Prayed the Holy Spirit over her. I prayed grace over her. I prayed strength over her. So my heart went out. I'm thinking, is this family saved? Where do they go for healing now? Jesus is the only one that can heal the broken heart. It's only through the power of the Holy Ghost. All those thoughts. So when I walk into a room like this, this massive crowd, I can only think, 
Because there's somebody here not saved. If this were your last day on earth, where are you going? Pastor, why would you end with a story like that? That's reality. All of us are going to die one day. Some of us might live to 45, 85, 95, 100. All of us in this room one day is going to die. So I'm going to count to three. If you're saying, Pastor, if I die today, I'm not right. But I want to get right. I want to get sold out. I want to get off the surface. I've been going to church, playing church, but I need to get immersed. I've been here. I need to get immersed with the Holy Ghost. Don't play games, Pastor. I want to become a disciple of Jesus. I want to make disciples of Jesus. I'm going to count to three. If you want to be forgiven of your sins, if you want to get off the surface and get immersed, if you want Jesus as your Lord, if you want to make sure if you die today, you would go straight to heaven. Say, Pastor, what's another location? It's a place called hell. All those who now receive Jesus, all those who reject Christ, all those who reject the cross, eventually will end up in the lake of fire in hell. Where that person will burn forever and ever, separated from God. Separated from good, everything good. So if you're in this auditorium tonight, maybe you're watching online, and you say, Pastor, I want Jesus. I want to go from the surface. I want to go inside. I need to repent of some sins. I need to get right with God. If I were to die today, I don't know where I'm going, but I want to make sure tonight, on the count of three all across this auditorium, when I say three, raise your hands. Why are you raising your hands? You want Jesus. You want salvation. You want to put your faith in what he did on the cross. On the count of three, raise your hands. Don't let nothing hold your hand down. Do not play Russian roulette with your life. Don't do it. Tomorrow's not promised to you and I. The Bible says we're like vapor. Here one second, gone. Here it goes. You want Jesus. You want to be forgiven. You want to go from a surface, you want to go deep with Jesus. Raise your hands when I say three. One, two, three. Raise your hands right now. Raise them, raise them. Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Keep them up, keep them up. Keep them up, keep them up, keep them up. Keep your hands up. I need salvation. I need Jesus. All those who just raised your hands, I want you to come up. Come, meet me here in the front. We're going to lead you today in a prayer of salvation. We're going to lead you in a prayer to become born again. Come on up. Even if you didn't raise your hand. Come, 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 come. Come. You want Jesus, come. You want to get immersed, come. You want to get off the surface, come. Come, come. Come, come on church, keep on clapping. Come, come. You've been on the surface. You want to get immersed. Run to the front. You're going to get the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the baptism of fire. Come, come, come. Come on, church. Keep on clapping. Sir, we're waiting for you. There you go. Come up here, sir. Come up here. Come up here. Holy Ghost is all over you. Come on, come on, come on. Set them free right now. Put your hands up. Sweet. Put your hands up, sir. Put your hands up. Do it. You can do it. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. There you go. 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 That's the power of the Holy Ghost. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Baptize them with fire. Fire. Clean them out. Uproot. There it goes. There it goes. Yeah. Everybody here in the front, I know some of you guys are crying, getting touched already. 
Baptism of fire, sir. Baptism of fire. Uproot, clean everything. Root of perversion is coming out. If you've ever been molested in any way, the fire of the baptism is going to root every spirit of perversion. We uproot perversion in the name of Jesus. Burn up with the acts of the Holy Ghost. Take it from the root in Jesus' name. Raise your hands, sweetie. Receive it right now. There you go. 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 There's a power of the Holy Ghost. Now, I want to make sure you guys get saved. We have a lot more people up here. Any leaders? We got a big family right here. Any more leaders? Come up and pray for some folks. Come up here. We got a lot of people up here. We got more people right here. No one's, no one's with them. Any more leaders, discipleship leaders, DGs, come up here. Want to make sure we exchange info. Get in the holy wars. Get them baptized. Any more leaders, come up. We got a lot of people here. Cigarettes. There you go. Come up here. Cigarettes. 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 Right now, you're being set free. Raise your hands to the Lord. Set free in the name of Jesus. Say, I receive. The baptism of fire set me free. Wash my body clean. Set me free. I receive freedom. I receive the baptism of fire in my life. Holy Ghost, fill me. I thank you, Jesus. There it goes, the freedom, the baptism of fire. There it goes, there it goes, there it goes, there it goes. Baptism of fire. Baptism of fire, the 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 baptism of fire. Now, really quick, for the ones who have never confessed Jesus as Lord, this is your first step. You got to repent. First step on getting the gift of the Holy Ghost is repentance. Every head bow, every eyes closed. You're at your seats. Close your, close your eyes. You should have came up here. It's okay. You're at your seats. Receive your salvation. Receive it right there at your seat. Every head bow, every eyes closed. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I repent of all my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Become my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. And on the third day, you rose again to give me eternal life. I put my faith in you. I am saved. I am born again. Now put your hands up. I receive the baptism of fire. I receive. The baptism of fire. Lord, I thank you. Go to every root, every evil desire, and burn it. Baptize me with fire. I receive it. I am set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. And what Jesus did on the cross, I am free. There it goes, the baptism of fire is being released. Your addictions are being broken. It's getting uprooted right now. The baptism of fire. The baptism of fire. The baptism of fire be released on this church. The baptism of fire be released in San Bernardino. The baptism of fire released on all of our campuses. Pomona campus, TJ campus, Arrowhead campus, Compton campus. The baptism of fire get released in our DGs. The fire of baptism fall in our DG Bible studies where things get burned up in your presence. We thank you. Give Jesus a big shout of praise.
I love you guys so much. Me and Pastor Veronica, we're going to hang out and we're going to pray for some people. We got to be here all night. We'll be here all night, but I love you guys. You're welcome to come to Arizona. Our grand opening will probably be about January or so. God bless you guys. Have a great, great night.